So what we're doing is we're doing a hero tournament. And what that is, is we're doing a singleton tournament. I've set it up with our community. Uh, we do this every once in a while. I'm trying to do them like once a month or so, but they normally fire like every second month or so. Uh, everybody in the community can just jump on in. I have my Discord and there's a tournament channel that we have for it. And we pick out like a different gruel set every time. And this time we did, essentially we're trying to mimic the style of format that like a Elder Dragon Highlander or Commander in Magic the Gathering would be. So it's a singleton event, but you can play four of one specific card. Your hero, you're allowed to do that. And then the rest of your deck has to align with that hero. So because we can't have a card that's like, you're always able to access it, like you would be able to do in something like Magic, then you're able to, uh, instead, we're, what we're doing is just running four of a copy instead. Okay. We've got Valkyrie Enforcer coming down. Oh, for a minute I thought this was Short Beak, and I'm like, I'm surprised we didn't see Short Beak come down, but it's because it's Storm of Feathers, so I misread that one. And this is a Cameron the Fox deck from Weeping Choir. Epic Legion's deck, uh, is... What was the hero in their deck? Oh, Cawthon, the Far, far Watcher. Good hit with the Line Breaker shield. Just... Epic just opting to go for the full aggro plan here. Just not caring at all. If there's any removal, man, Epic's plan crumbles real fast. Yeah, somebody else submitted a Cameron deck. Psyduck in the Discord, or uh, Hungover Wump in the chat. Yeah. I mean, do you Storm of Feathers just to get a count into your yard? Probably not. Like, right now, Epic is still winning this game. It's on Weeping Choir to find an answer, but... It seems like something Weeping Choir should be able to find an answer for. Maybe not, though. Okay, Storm of Feathers is coming down this time to stop the chump block. And it might have been a good idea. There was a pause there from Weeping Choir's side where they might have a pump spell. This is just a pure tempo play from Epic. I like the way that they played this hand because, like, this hand is in trouble. It's not been getting what it needs. But Epic just playing super aggressive is the way to get out of it, right? If Emerald Coin was undepleted, that Hammer of Might would be really nice. Now Valkyrie is a must-block card. No more stuns from Epic. Does Weeping Choir have removal or like another flying blocker? Some way to make sure that they're not just straight dead to this. Attacking even with the 2-1. So that's got to be like a board wipe or something, right? Is it just nothing? It's just a life gain. Okay, so the attack was simply there because of the fact that they didn't want to chump block with it yet if they could gain the life, which I actually think is kind of smart. If they have that option, something like a Combust would just absolutely wreck Epic Legion's day. Unfortunately, Hammer of Might's still gonna end it. Like, that was an interesting play by Weeping Choir, and I actually like it, because then you don't have to chump block and gain the life. You can gain the life and try and get, like, a little bit of damage back and maybe try and force a race really quickly. And it's a risky play, but when you're that far behind, you've got to do the risky plays, I think. Like, that was a smart idea to do it. Lovely basket. Hopes nothing happens to those eggs. No, the basket just kind of kept getting adorned with more and more stuff. Epic just kept on adding pretty bows to that basket the whole time until eventually that uh, <laughs> Psyduck just couldn't take it anymore. Your deck's name is Hooray. Excellent. Thank you, Epic. 
Okay, you need to mute the stream at least. Well, like, you should pause and mute the stream now because I'm going to be watching from Weeping Choir's side, though. So, just so you know, Epic. All right, and both players have already kept and are ready to go. Apparently, sorry, they're already playing. Epic's kept and played a power. Epic's on, Epic's on the play. This hand is good. I definitely like this hand. Oof. Immediate silence from the Valkyrie. Nasty. Like, this is a singleton format, so having Valkyrie and Forcer in play on turn three both games is pretty rough. Like, that's kind of nasty here. The big question is, what do you go to the market for? Probably Regent's Tomb? Trade in, like, Last Chance? There's a lot of options, for sure. Yeah, Valkyrie twice is pretty nasty. Some one of. I mean, the one that was really disgusting is Ganbatari going Living Example turn 2, turn 3, Temple Shion. Like, that felt real gross. Finest weapons in okay, so Weeping's consulted and decided they're going for something. I'm wondering what. Decides for Pristine Light. I, that is kind of the other one for an argument for, I think, because... We know, we saw what Epic Legion did last time, right? Which was just suit this thing up over and over again. And just constantly get in. So it's fair to assume that that's like a likely scenario of what Epic Legion's deck is trying to do. And just stopping that's not bad. Hmm. Do you cast into Shadow and kill this just to get rid of the hammer? I think that you probably do. You don't want to decimate for a little while anyways, because you have the Vishni. Yeah, so that's a smart move. I definitely like that play. Daring Griffin. That's a dicey one to have to play without anything to exalt onto. Because all your opponent needs to do is play like a Seek Power or something they don't care about and just get rid of it. If I'm Weeping Choir here, I think that you have to get rid of it. Whether that's through Pristine Light or Annihilate is kind of your own choice. I would think Pristine Light, honestly. Alright, Weeping Choir just gonna ignore it for now. I don't like that. I like getting rid of it when it can't exalt, right? Personally, I think that it's a really good idea to just make sure that it's gone. I don't like the idea of having to use two cards now, for sure. Because the problem is, is like, right now you can use Pristine Light and you've answered it. Now you basically, you're guaranteeing it where one card doesn't answer it anymore. Okay, well... I think... Like, you have to go for it, right? It's got to be, like, Annihilate Golem or something. You don't want to let that keep sitting there. I certainly wouldn't, anyways. Yeah, okay. I would do almost anything to get rid of that card. No Obsidian Golem. Yeah, I don't like that. I think that you need to be aggressive there. This pristine light is going to be good. I'm sure Weeping Choir is wishing that they had a way to sacrifice their 3-3. Three, three. Hojin's nice. And now attack in and pristine light I imagine is the play. And with Epic on only two cards it's looking pretty okay. Pristine Light, no attacks. That also makes sense. I mean, it does let you get in for extra damage. I like the option of maybe getting them to block the, like, Granadin drone. You never know. Like, that's kind of a head-ass block, but it's still really nice. Hmm. Now Hidden Road Smuggler is online. It's a thing that you could go for. I wouldn't mind seeing a Regent's Tomb here. That's a lot of value right now. Smuggler's Stash is something that you could use, because it does get back Red Canyon Smuggler, so you know that you'd actually be able to get your, uh... Like, it would allow you for sure to get the Regent's Tomb again afterwards. Like, Smuggler's Stash means that you get Regent's Tomb later. Oh, I like this. Epic Legion is going like, So what do I got? What have I got? What you gonna do? I'd have probably blocked the Obsidian Golem. 
Because you're not really losing out on much by blocking with it. And then at least you're not taking this hit in the face. You're forcing them to use the pump spell this turn too, is, which is nice. Oops. Tough one though. Hey, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it very much. Only the best for you. And go for display. Display now just kills Hojin, I imagine, is the plan. There's also a non-zero option of just, like, playing a power, getting the other Hojin larger, and, like, getting this Hojin larger, being able to attack and then trading, but, I mean, obviously not now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that is... That's nasty. There's a lot of life on Epic Legion's side. Like, we've inquired does get Katia rid of that, and they've got a really wide board, but at the same time... Epic Legion bought themselves a million years worth of time to draw bigger and better cards. Oh god, no! The worst option! Oh, what a counter. That is a hell of a time to have uh, Parole's Choice. Epic Legion just kind of has every answer here. This is sick. That really sucks. That hurts a lot. And now Avagraph, which isn't as bad in this because of the simple fact that, like... It is a singleton format, so there's only going to be one thing to bother with, but it ain't good. At this point, you almost don't jump block, because now you can't block with everything and kill it. Yeah, like, the problem is now you can only have seven power up. I'm not saying that that was wrong, it's just that's a tough decision to make. Like, I'm on the opinion that you might just not block here for a turn to see if you can get another unit. Oh, God. And it just... I hate to be the person that, like... I'm called shotting the worst cards to the top of Weeping, Weeping Choir's deck here, I feel like. Oh, that's enough. Ugh. Brutal. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered anyway, is my line. Block with Obsidian to get the armor back up at least. Yeah, something like that would have been nice. That Hojin, though. Oof. Could have blocked the Golem and not lost any power. Yeah, something like that would have been nice. I mean, it, as it turns out, like, it really wouldn't have mattered. It was just a tough one. Definitely a lot of tough decision making there. And just some very, very solid draws from Epic. That Perul's choice was backbreaking. Turn 3 Valkyrie Enforcer both games is super disgusting, too. Valkyrie Enforcer is a lot of, uh... It's a lot of power. It doesn't see a lot of play anymore, but... When you play formats like this, where you change things up just a little bit... <sighs> Sorry. You can really see the power of some of those old cards. That was really gross. That clutch was... That choice was so clutch, yeah. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that, uh... Psyduck is out of the tournament. It just means they go to loser's bracket. So what's going to happen here is we show Epic winning two games, Psyduck winning zero, and that bumps Psyduck into the loser's bracket. We'll now have round two, Walladil versus Epic Legion another time. Uh, we'll have Alesha versus Beer Broken and Fish Spider versus Hulb. Those ones are going to be happening later this